Hello, today we're going to go fossil hunting down Highcliffe Beach. I'm a geologist and I'm going to show you what to look out for. Let's go see what you can find. So, a quick bit of context. The rocks in this area are approximately 35 to 42 million years old. This was roughly when this area would have been a warm, shallow sea, at about 40 degrees north when you're looking at the latitude longitude. The upper cliffs up that way are constantly slumping. So that A, that means new material for fossils is coming out all the time. That also means it's quite a health and safety danger spot. E.g. R.I.P. that person's welly boot. <laughs> that is in there. And this is why they say warning soft mud. <laughs> So typically just stick to the beach if you ever end up fossil hunting here. But that's where I'm going to be looking today and well, we'll see what we can come across. I'm already starting to see a few little things, so I'm just going to point things out as we go. You often find little nodules like this on the beach. This is a really hard rock, which is a limestone. And these sparkly bits going through are calcite veins. And you can kind of see how they've split and gone into cracks in the rock. This isn't a fossil, but they are very pretty and do look lovely when you've got a shiny surface. These are called septarian nodules. The finer details of how they form is pretty debated, but it is agreed that they're precipitation of calcium carbonate. They form from the inside out into a rough ball shape within surrounding marine clays, and the internal cracks form when the mud dries out, and the calcite fills in these gaps. I've just found a really cool one of these nodules, just down here. So you can see the bits that have all broken open. You can also see how these nodules would have cracked and been in the cliffs originally. So they generally are in this sort of circle shape. And you can see that's what's left of it there. And all on these crack planes is all the calcite. This is a really nuts piece. They don't normally come out this big. This is really quite a cool one. But on to the next thing. My next thing is I'm going to start looking along the foreshore because I know that's where I can find shark's teeth. So one of the best places to look is all in amongst this sort of fine stuff right on the edge of where the sea has washed them out. There we go, there's a little diddy one. He's a bit worn, he's not very good. I don't know. Oh my gosh, oh he's cute. Oh, that's quite a decent one. There you go. So these are the sorts of shark teeth. Oh, is that not one there? Oh no, that wasn't one there. Ignore me. There you go. This sort of gives you an idea of the sort of shark teeth that you can find in this margin. And it, it tends to really be on this band here, the bit that the sea's just washed out in the last tide. See, two in like, 30 seconds has set quite a precedent now, hasn't it? That's quite tricky to keep up. I often find little young kids are really good at finding these shark's teeth in the shingle, and I'm convinced it's because they're close to the ground, so they see it better. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit of a worn shark's tooth there. We've mainly just got the root and a tiny bit of the tooth. Not really worth my time, but I'll put it on top there. Someone else might get excited later. Oh, look, there's a really tiny one there. Oh look, he's the baby's baby. Oh no, where'd that go? Now I'm sure some wise person has just spotted that a lot quicker than me. There we go. It's such a huge beach. And there's so, when you think of how tiny one like this is, it's really luck that you find them. So you've just got to sit down get your eye in and you don't know quite what you might find. This foam is wild today. Look at it all flowing at me. Just be glad I've upbladed my mic so that it doesn't all like just go I was sensible enough to come here on a falling tide so although the waves are wild they are not getting any closer to me. There it flies. <laughs> I'm just having a look in some of these lowest cliffs here because quite often, I can see a little bit there, you get these shells eroding out 
This is a really cool one actually. This one's called Dentalium. This little guy is more like approximately 40 million years old, which is quite cute. But actually there's an amazing history with Native American people using these in their clothing, but the modern ones again. Uh, I will see if I can attach some pretty pictures, but they are really gorgeous and really decorative. This little guy would be way too delicate. You can see, the closer you look, there are shells everywhere. A lot of the shells are made of aragonite, um, which is a form of calcium carbonate. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know limestone is calcium carbonate. Calcite is calcium carbonate. There's a lot of things that take the exact same chemical formula, but they have slightly different structures form in slightly different ways. So these shells being aragonite means they're quite delicate. They haven't recrystallized into something like calcite, which would preserve them a bit better. Ooh, this one's These are only fragment pieces, they're not anything too exciting, but I just sort of spotted these so I came on over. This would have been part of a, a chunkier shell, but fortunately it's been broken up. But you can see that there are some shells out here that are a little bit more, you know, they're not quite as delicate. Sometimes you find them whole, but generally by the time it's in this stuff, it's because it's already been swept down very slowly and eroded out. So the chances of you finding those bigger shells are a little bit more infrequent. I bumped into a chap down here who found one of these chunky shells, so I will show you this now. That's a really good one. <laughs> so yeah, shows they're out here, I just didn't find it today, but he found one. That doesn't mean that it's not absolutely chock full of fossils every single place that you look. But it just takes knowing what to come in and look for. These are all Tarotella ones. These are really cute. Just a little mass of them there. Knees, knees, knees. But look, some of these are so, so tiny. Little tiny, tiny shells. Gorgeous. Oh, that's cool. So sometimes you get these. This is like the internal section of a piece of shell. I think they look really weird. So all the outsides weathered the way, just leaving the tiny, sort of more sturdy section that didn't get as beaten up by erosion. I think they look quite cute, actually. It's really easy to dismiss fossils like this that are so tiny. When you really think about it, these things are 40 million years old. And we're talking about biodiversity these days. Well, look at how diverse the shell life was here. I, I think it's just amazing when you really think about the context of these aren't just modern shells sitting about. They're so lucky we've got so many preserved here. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's really cool. Oh, nice. That was more luck than judgment. So that is a tiny, tiny bit of a vertebra. I'm not quite sure of what. It's really damaged. I'm guessing some kind of fish. It won't be anything too fancy. But yeah, that's sweet. It's nowhere near as big as the fish vertebra that I found last time I came down here. Oh my gosh, I should show you that footage. Actually, the last time I was down this beach, I found a vertebra from a bony fish. I absolutely lost my mind. I got really, really excited. And it actually took me quite a while to figure out what it was. I had to message a couple of colleagues and stuff like that. I will attach the footage, but you will have to forgive me because it was all before I did YouTube. So all of the footage is vertical, but it gives you an idea of what else you can have down here. So, okay, so out of this little hole here, I have just found something that I'm very excited about. This is some kind of vertebrae of something quite large. I'm just trying to give it a bit of a rinse to see if I can see what it is a little bit better. It's very cold. So I'm seeing some structure on the side and really digging into the bottom in there. So I am texting some people they, they confirmed it's a vertebrae of something, but we don't know what. And you might be glad to know that I don't believe in part twos. It narrowed down to two options. So it's either some kind of big bony fish thing, or... Well, it was a big bony fish thing, so I won't continue to bore you with that, but you get the picture. These things are down here. 
just found another little cool pebble here. Boink. Some nice chunky bits of shell in that one. And he has a sister rock just here. Shelly. Actually, speaking of Shelley, Mary Shelley, as in the author of Frankenstein, she's actually buried only like a few miles that way because uh, her parents lived in Bournemouth. There's actually a Weatherspoons called the Mary Shelley just near here. Um, funnily enough, not to do with the shells of the beach here, but yeah, just fun fact. I was ever hopeful I would find some lignite today, which is basically like fossilised wood. It's not like petrified wood, as in the silicified stuff that you see maybe sold in gift shops. It's, it's a lot more delicate and sort of friable, breaks apart. But unfortunately, I have not found any today, so I'll have to attach a picture of what you can look for instead. <laughs> It literally looks like wood and it's basically with the lowest grade of coal possible. It's normally like over 25% carbon. It's just a fun little curiosity that I normally enjoy looking for down here. Shark teeth, shells, fish vertebra. It's about what I expect from Bart Monsey. So thank you for joining me today. I've had a nice little walk and a wonder and hopefully see you next time.